The original Xbox team lived by the mantra, there's no power greater than X. Here comes a new challenger! Xbox One X, the most powerful console ever made, sets a new quality standard for gamers and game creators. And as we segue into the initial landing part of the game, then nothing really improves here. It's looking absolutely dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Absolutely abs 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 dreadful. Now, I'd like to introduce one of our leaders in the Xbox engineering team, responsible for making the Xbox One experience great for gamers and developers. And on the Xbox One and the X, particularly when it's so heavy on CPU resources, I'm guessing to get it running at all is quite an achievement. What's good YouTube? It's your host, Axel Rose, the Shogun with the slogan, and you're watching MVP Magazine. Now, first of all, before we get this started, I just want to give a quick shout out to all my subscribers that's been coming through, checking out my content while I've been on hiatus. I want to give a shout out to Larry Cordwell, Barrel Bob, Lou Boo, everyone that's been coming through, dropping insightful comments, like my boy Blood Dragon, Really appreciate that. Now, where do we begin, people? Like, honestly, because when I made my initial Digital Foundry Exposes the Xbox One video, I had the usual, yep, I had those Xbox fanboys bleeding in my comment section. Yes! And I'm not objective just for being objective's sake. I have no ill will towards Microsoft, but we know those guys can just be shady. Whenever Phil Spencer talks, I'm just like, him out of here. So it was just always better to just be a little bit more cautious or skeptical when it came to the supposed power of the Xbox One. So now Microsoft's holiday heavy hitter, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, has finally been released. From the beginning, our focus on game creators and you, the gamer, gave us three big goals we needed to hit power, compatibility, and craftsmanship. You've got the netcode trying to work out where all the players are landing all at once. Yeah, it just takes a real toll. I mean, it's kind of surprising that we're even seeing it on the Xbox One X uh, to a certain extent. But yeah, it's, this is really a bad first impression as you land especially. Um, yeah. Now, I know this game is pretty unoptimized at the moment, even on PC. But wasn't it Microsoft? Weren't, weren't they the ones who said that this console was... It's a monster. So shouldn't the hardware be able to just beast processing the whole game or at least get a steady 30 frames per second going? I mean, obviously things are going to get better, but in terms of getting a release out that's going to work well with console audiences, I'm not so sure. Uh, yeah, didn't think so. This is why I guess Microsoft should have just been a tad more modest with their advertising and marketing in general. Now, this device is priced and aimed at the high-end gamer, but if it's not producing consistent high-end results, like, what exactly is the point? Especially when it doesn't have any exclusive games. Like, really, what is the point? Now, I know Microsoft expects you to have all that extra cash because they haven't been giving you any games to buy, but this is just ridiculous. Let's talk power, which starts with the specs. But at the same time, when you have the likes of Microsoft's Advanced Technology Group and the Coalition involved, is 30 frames per second locked too much to ask for even at this stage? Is 30 frames per second locked too much to ask for? Is 30 frames per second is 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 30 frame is 30 frame is 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 30 frame locked too much to ask for? Is 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 6 teraflop GPU clocked at 1.172 gigahertz. Is 30 frames per second? 